The effects of Hurricane George are being felt in many areas of the central Gulf Coast states. There are already reports of flash flooding, heavy rainfall, and high winds. Good evening and welcome to this special edition of Weather Center. I'm Christina Abernathy. Hurricane George continues to be our top story as the eye slowly inches closer to land. Let's get a complete update from Mike Seidel in the Forecast Center. And Christina, a whole list of problems tonight continuing along the Gulf Coast as Hurricane George uh, treks very slowly towards the coastline. We've had reports of flash flooding. Those of you in Santa Rosa County and Escambia County in the Florida Panhandle, also Escambia County in Alabama, and now Baldwin County in uh, Alabama, all under flash flood warnings until 7.45 in the morning. Some of you have had upwards of a foot of rainfall so far and a whole lot more to come. Let's give you the latest now on Hurricane George from the Hurricane Center. We just got the intermediate advisory in. The only change will be the latitude and longitude. So if you're plotting at home, the latitude now 29.9 north and the longitude 88.7 west. So over the past hour, it again has just jogged a bit to the north by one-tenth of a degree. That puts it now 40 miles south-southeast of Biloxi and about 80 miles southeast of New Orleans. The winds are unchanged at 105 miles an hour. And again, it continues to track very slowly, very slowly towards the coast, five or six miles an hour. The pressure, too, unchanged at 964 millibars. Hurricane warnings, uh, no uh, change there. We don't expect any overnight. Continuing from Morgan City east to New Orleans, Pensacola, and then as far east as Panama City. But uh, it would seem right now this would be the hardest hit area from Hurricane George as it makes landfall sometime later on today, Monday. As far as uh, what we've seen across the Gulf Coast, we've had uh, quite a bit of beach erosion, huge surf, uh, storm surge, and heavy rainfalls. We can show you what it looked like in Gulfport this evening. Uh, Sunday evening, you can see uh, a lot of uh, rough surf there. Uh, the uh, marina uh, getting uh, pounded here. Hopefully the boats will be okay, especially if you've uh, moored them out away from the docks. And the streets are virtually empty. A ghost town here as everybody is heeding the evacuation orders. The fact that there is a hurricane warning, they're staying home and staying put. And that is uh, certainly uh, the best thing to do until we get Francis, or I should say, uh, Hurricane George out of the way. Francis, another story, New Orleans had 17 inches of rain from Francis a few weeks ago. Well, today they're bracing for Hurricane George and the Superdome became uh, an overnight hotel for many guests. The dome was opened up on Sunday afternoon as a shelter to people needing a place to stay. Entire families moved in, carting all the necessi necessities rather of home. Thousands of people have left New Orleans fearing the potential for flooding from Hurricane George. And with me on the phone tonight is Sergeant Howard McKee of the Louisiana State Police, keeping us updated on the road closures. Now, Sergeant McKee, we've talked quite a bit earlier this evening about the interstates being shut down in that part of Louisiana. Virtually, it's a no-go into uh, Metro New Orleans. How about some of the secondary roads? What can you tell us this evening? Some of the secondary roads, uh, especially down in St. Bernard and Black Woman's Parish, we're starting to see uh, flooding at this time. Uh, Earlier this evening, we had a, a levee uh, that gave way, and two state highways are submerged under about five foot of water. Uh, so uh, luckily, people took this uh, seriously and, and sought shelter, and, and hopefully most people got out of that area. Uh, there are some curfews in effect uh, in Jefferson and Orleans Parish, which would be uh, the New Orleans area proper until 6 or 7 in the morning. Do you expect a lot of traffic on the roadways as uh, everybody considers going to work Monday morning in New Orleans, or are most businesses just uh, calling it quits for the day? I think most businesses are, are calling it quits for the day. I know the uh, state employees uh, have, have uh, been told to stay home unless it's you know essential personnel that need to be out. Uh, surprisingly, though, we're getting a lot of calls at the command post here about people wanting to travel I tend to, to go across country, so uh, y'all might touch on that base, and, and you know, tonight and tomorrow is not the day to be traveling. Yeah, we've been uh, mentioning that quite a bit here. Sergeant McKee, we appreciate the update. Sergeant Howard McKee with the Louisiana State Police, and that's worth mentioning again. Interstate 10 in Louisiana, that part of Louisiana, and through New Orleans, it's closed. So if you're trying to get east-west, you're going to go have to go north up to another east-west interstate, say I-40, uh, and maybe that's a, a good route, too, through Arkansas into Tennessee because I-10 is shut down for the foreseeable future. Now let's turn to 
Meteorology Supervisor Stu Ostro. And again, here on a Monday morning, we're seeing Georges uh, pounding the coast. It is, though, getting closer and closer as uh, we get towards uh, daybreak. In fact, the eye of the hurricane, as we speak, is getting very close to the coast. And Dolphin Island reporting wind gusts over 80 miles an hour in the past hour. Yeah, an hour ago they were sustained at 59 miles per hour, now up to 68 miles per hour, and those gusts have uh, increased too from the upper 70s on into the low 80s. And we've uh, certainly had quite a few evacuations uh, in those barrier islands for good measure, and I know a lot of folks are, uh, uh, I'm glad, they're glad they've got out of harm's way. But what's, uh, what's, what's to be expected for the rest of tonight and into Monday and Tuesday with this hurricane because it is moving so slowly? Well, if we only had the winds to deal with or we only had the storm surge, or we only had the extremely heavy rains, that would be bad enough, but we have all of those put together, so it's a very serious situation. Let's take a look at the Doppler radar now out of Mobile, and uh, Stu, let's uh, talk a little bit about what's going on here, and uh, there is uh, certainly a lot of rain associated with the system. The rain bands coming in, especially in the northeast quadrant, as uh, we continue to follow the eye of the uh, hurricane right in here. Look at that northeastern eye wall. Yeah, I think we can uh, even zoom in a little closer on that if we have the, uh, the zoom on this radar. Do we have it? There we go. Uh, spend a little time in this. Here's the Florida Panhandle. Here's Alabama, Mississippi, uh, Dauphin Island in here. A couple things we want to point out. One, we have another one of these outer squall bands uh, here in uh, Santa Rosa County. Okaloosa County, and we saw something like this earlier over Pensacola. Now these cells are coming over just like uh, train cars over the railroad tracks, so extremely heavy rains and potential for flash flooding there. Other heavy rain echoes in here, so that's going on. Then we have the eye of the hurricane right in here, the Mississippi Barrier Islands, and then the uh, cities along the Mississippi coast here. So the northern edge of the eye is getting very, very close to the coast, and we have the uh, eastern eye wall where these intense squalls keep popping up and heading over the coast, uh, producing some of these extremely strong winds on Dauphin Island, and all this is going to be coming in during the course of the night. And then away from the center of circulation, we continue to have the uh, high water levels, the battering waves, and the beach erosion. And we've already seen upwards to a foot of rain in parts of uh, the Florida Panhandle. Now in Alabama, I mentioned the flash flood warnings. If we can take a look uh, at those, uh, the radars once again, if we can uh, go back to the radar, we'll show you what's going on as far as uh, the heavy rain is concerned. We mentioned Santa Rosa, Escambia, not only Escambia in Florida, but Escambia in Alabama. Then we have Baldwin County. So far, no warning from Mobile County, but it wouldn't surprise me if one is issued overnight tonight. And we still have to deal with this uh, eye wall, this rain band coming in over the next, uh, say, four to five hours. Right, and we have the uh, storm surge, which will be uh, greatest near and just to the right of where the eye and the eye wall come in. But then we have, uh, again, all the other coastal problems out a little bit farther to the east due to storm surge and then particularly the battering waves and the cumulative effect of those waves upon the water level. And the tornado watch we just showed you briefly. I think we can pop it up again for you. And this is up now until 1 o'clock Monday afternoon. And we've had a couple of tornadoes touch down doing some minor damage. So far, though, uh, the worst has been the heavy rains and the flooding. We'll keep you uh, updated throughout the night. Stu Ostro, our meteorology supervisor. And, of course, if you're away from your TV set, check us out online at the Weather Channel online service at weather.com. That will get you updated with the latest information on the hurricane. Now back to the studio. Christina has the latest on the current weather and your Monday forecast. All right, Mike, thanks a lot. And we do still have some storms out there, and specifically northeastern Kansas and northwestern Missouri, where you see the yellows, the reds, that's where the worst of it is right now. And some of these storms have uh, had a history of producing golf ball-sized hail, so watch out for that. Uh, Pottawatomie County, you're under a severe thunderstorm warning right now. So, again, take cover if you live here. Wet weather possible in several areas across the nation tonight, and some of those could be in the form of strong or even severe storms, including the threat for isolated tornadoes. Into the northeast we go, where you'll start out the day in the 60s from Boston to New York to Philly to D.C., partly cloudy skies. Watch out here to the south, though rain and wind associated with George. Torrential rains expected. To the north, Chicago, partly cloudy with 56 your temperature, 50 Minneapolis, St. Paul, and in the west. <laughs> Hurricane.
Hurricane George is set to make landfall across the Gulf Coast, and we've got continuing coverage here at the Weather Channel. It's uh, just several hours away from making landfall, and we'll have a complete update coming up with the latest from the National Hurricane Center, also analysis with Stu Ostro here in the Forecast Center. First, though, let's uh, give you uh, the latest from the Hurricane Center. And 80 miles southeast of New Orleans, Louisiana, the latest position as of 2 a.m. Central. It's drifting north-northwest, and we just got the uh, 3 a.m. fix from the National uh, Hurricane Center via the Hurricane Hunters, the Air Force Reservist. It's now at 30.1 north, 88.8 west. That's 30.1 north, 88.8 west. That's about 25 miles south-southeast of Biloxi. And that's about 55 miles east-southeast of New Orleans. So that's the very latest. The winds are still at 105 miles an hour. No changes in the warnings and watches. The warnings continuing uh, now for the Gulf Coast from Morgan City over to Pensacola in Panama City. Then east of there, we do have the uh, hurricane watch and tropical storm warning from Panama City over to St. Mark's. And we can show you what it looked like earlier on Sunday evening after dark as the uh, storm moved closer to the Mississippi Gulf Coast. This is Gulfport. And you can see a lot of wind, a lot of wave action. We've had reports of beach erosion. Uh, certainly power outages are widespread. And the heavy rainfalls have been really one of the big stories. But you can see a lot of folks staying home. The roads are empty. And that is the best place to be in this kind of situation, away from flood-prone areas, away from the beaches and the coast, and in a place of uh, safe shelter. And uh, that's uh, what we've seen across the Gulf Coast. Now let's bring in our senior... Well, at first, Let's get you updated on the situation because we do have on the phone Lieutenant Howard McKee of the Louisiana State Police, and uh, he has the latest on the road conditions across the New Orleans area. Good morning. Good morning, Sergeant. Can you give us the latest on the interstates and some of the secondary roads in that area this morning? We're starting to experience some flooding over some of the uh, secondary state highways. Uh, earlier in St. Bernard Parish this evening, they have a, a levee fail, and there's some flooding over some state highways there. Uh, the New Orleans area itself uh, is experiencing the winds, but uh, other than that, that's, that's about it. The, uh, there is a curfew in effect for Jefferson and Orleans Parish uh, until 7 o'clock in the morning. Also, uh, we've got some flooding on US 90 at the Mississippi State Line where water has come up to the edge of the roadway and they do have that, uh, that area closed down. And once again, reiterating, I-10 is closed down in that area, correct? That is correct. Through the uh, New Orleans area in uh, Jefferson and Orleans parishes, uh, Interstate 10 is closed. Do you have any, uh, any word on when it might reopen on Monday? No, that's, that's going to depend on uh, you know, how much rain we get. Uh, a lot of people tend to forget that New Orleans is, is below sea level, so depending on the amount of rain, uh, that we get there and the flooding that uh, we'll experience from that was going to determine when it will be reopened. We're going to look at tomorrow uh, some projections uh, of when we might start uh, after this passes, allowing some people to come back towards that area. Okay, Sergeant. Sergeant Howard McKee with the Louisiana State Police. We appreciate that update early on this Monday morning. Now let's join uh, Stu Oster, our meteorology supervisor here in the Forecast Center. And Stu, uh, it looks like that uh, George is finally going to make landfall after uh, you know, just lambasting the Caribbean, brushing the Keys, and now into uh, the uh, Delta area of Mississippi and Alabama. The northern part of the uh, eye of the hurricane is now just about onto Gulf Islands National Seashore, and the eye wall is now starting to get onto the uh, mainland. Let's take a look at the satellite loop, the infrared, and we do have uh, some of the latest pictures in for the past couple of hours, and you can see us uh, through that eye is now, looks like it's right over Dolphin Island. Uh, yeah, actually, uh, Dauphin Island is a little bit to the east. This is Gulf Islands National Seashore here. Uh, it is still conceivable that at the last minute the hurricane could stall out and stop moving, uh, but at least for the last few hours it's been making slow but steady progress as we can see in the satellite photo. And at the last minute as it does these little wobbles, perhaps wobbling just a little bit, to the northwest. Looks like it's going to go in right around Pascagoula. Uh, not very far away from Pascagoula, perhaps between Pascagoula and Biloxi, somewhere in that stretch. Let's take a look at the radar now. The radar indicating the, uh, certainly the rain bands, and that has been the other story here, the uh, tremendous amounts of rain across this area. Some of you under warnings, including Escambia, uh, not only in Florida, but Alabama, Santa Rosa County, and then Baldwin County, just to the east of Mobile. 
All of you are under flash flood warnings in those four counties until 7.45 in the morning. But a more concern right now would be uh, not only that, but also the storm surge. Yeah, this radar picture uh, uh, dramatizes the, fa the fact that it's not just a point on the map, a hurricane that is. Uh, the effects covering a wide area, a lot of this heavy rain, these cells uh, going over the same area. We've had flooding problems from the rain already tonight. We also have the strong winds coming on shore, continuing to crash those big waves onto the beaches and cause severe erosion. But last but not least, we do have the eye of the hurricane very clearly evident on the radar here. In fact, the eye wall overall, the structure of the hurricane looks about as well organized as it has during the last couple of days. And we can see the barrier islands in here, the northern part of the eye just about getting on shore. Dauphin Island over here with the uh, powerful squalls coming on shore there. And then we have uh, Gulfport, Biloxi, Pascagoula in here getting into some of the intense squalls just to the north of the eye of the hurricane. And we mentioned the heavier rainfall. Some areas have already had over a foot of rainfall. There's our Doppler radar estimate. And as you can see here, Stu, uh, since 8 o'clock in the morning, uh, we have uh, seen as much as uh, a foot of rainfall around Pensacola. More rain to come. And we have just gotten the latest stop out of Biloxi. And if I'm reading this correctly, it has sustained winds at Keesler Air Force Base of 53 knots, which is about 60 miles an hour, a gust to 100 and nine knots, is that correct? Which is uh, about 125 miles per hour. So in fact, the worst part of the hurricane, the eye wall is now coming on shore and it's gonna be a rough couple of hours as it does so. Okay, let's get back to the uh, rainfall. As we mentioned, uh, the rainfall has been prolific so far, Stu. You know, a typical hurricane, you get say five or 10 inches of rain. But in this situation, we've already had upwards to a foot of rainfall. And with a slow movement of the storm, we could easily double that total in some areas. Yeah, there, there's just all kinds of bad things going on with this hurricane here. We have the, uh, the extremely heavy rains, which have already caused rainfall-induced flooding. We have the winds coming on shore, not only bringing that moisture, but also causing the water to pile up. And then now, as the, uh, the hurricane circulation right around the center perhaps tightens up a little bit, then we have the storm surge itself right near where the eye is coming in. Now what about the potential for some of this rain to wrap back around towards New Orleans uh, later today? Uh, because so far New Orleans has done, um, gotten off fairly easily. Right. If the hurricane continues moving mainly north or north-northwest and it does not wrap a lot of that rain around, then New Orleans would uh, continue to be spared the worst of the rain. If, however, it were to slow down, wobble a, bit, a little bit to the west and wrap some of that rain around, they'd get some more. But for the most part, as has been the case with this hurricane for the last several days even, a lot of the worst effects from the, uh, the coastal effects to the winds and the rain are from the uh, middle part of the hurricane off to the east. And the other aspect of the hurricane from the middle part off to the east and northeast, that quadrant is the risk of severe weather and tornadoes. Tornado Watch, we can update you on, has been extended. Uh, the Tornado Watch, well, we have the Tornado Watch there. There we go. There's the Tornado Watch until 1 o'clock in the morning, or rather 1 o'clock in the afternoon central time. So that continues to be a uh, problem because uh, twisters have spun up. We've had two touchdowns. We've had some damage. So again, uh, we have the risk of tornadoes, too. We have the heavy rains, the flooding, the flash flooding, which continues, and now the storm surge and those wind gusts, as we mentioned in Biloxi, just reported at 125 miles an hour as Hurricane George makes landfall. And gusts like that can cause structural damage to buildings, blow in windows, that sort of thing, cause some roof damage. So people sh that are experiencing that sort of thing should observe tornado safety rules, even though it's not a tornado, we have winds of that magnitude, get away from the exterior portion of the building, get inside the middle of the building where you're best protect protected from the outside. Yeah, stay away from the windows and uh, get under something sturdy. Good advice there, Stu Ostro, and we will continue our coverage with Hurricane George now making landfall across the uh, Gulf Coast of Mississippi. We'll have more live reports coming up through the morning here on the Weather Channel. Of course, if you're away from your TV set, you can always check us out online at the Weather Channel online service at weather.com. Now let's go back to the studio for the latest current weather and your Monday forecast. Here's Vivian Brown. Well, thanks, Mike and Stu, for the latest, of course, on Hurricane George, and undoubtedly that will be our top story as we go through the day. But other areas of concern, we're watching a surface cold front as it swings off the New England coast and kind of drapes back here. <laughs>
Thanks for joining us early on this Monday morning. I'm Rick Griffin here with Dr. Steve Lyons. We'll check with him and get his analysis on the latest concerning Hurricane George, which is approaching the Mississippi coastline, the north central Gulf of Mexico coast this morning and should make landfall within the next couple of hours. Just recently, Biloxi reporting a wind gust of 126 miles per hour. And we're going to go live to Jim Cantori in Biloxi in just a moment. First, let's check the uh, up-to-date position. These are new coordinates for you. And they are 30.2 north, 88.8 .8 west. That puts the eye of the hurricane very close to Biloxi, Mississippi. Top sustained winds 105. We know the wind gusts are higher than that, however, based on the observation from Biloxi. North-northwesterly is the movement at 6, and that could contribute to some, to some extremely heavy rainfall the next 24 to 36 hours, and the pressure 962 millibars. Hurricane warnings continue in effect this morning. Uh, same place as yesterday, from Morgan City, Louisiana, to Panama City, Florida. Well, let's go live to the scene right now. Jim Cantori, stationed in Biloxi, Mississippi. Let's get the latest from Jim. Actually, uh, Rick, we have moved inland uh, since yesterday. We're in Gulfport right now. We're about five miles from the coast, and we are using night vision, which takes the ambient light and uh, obviously uh, exemplifies it or amplifies it. And we have seen some damage around here. Our, our, car, our photographer, Blair Carper, is going to pan around, and you can see that some of the signs have been damaged here. We are also under a tornado warning uh, as we speak. You mentioned the 126 at uh, Biloxi. You mentioned the 120 at Keesler Air Force Base. Obviously, that is going to do some damage here. A couple of police officers have stopped by the uh, hotel. They saw the, the lights from our truck on. They were wondering what's going on, and they've uh, also briefed us on the fact that there is uh, power out just about everywhere here in Gulfport. It looked like the 4th of July, Rick, about two hours ago. Transformers blowing everywhere this morning. And we've even heard word out of Pascagoula, Mississippi, that uh, one of the shelters that had 90 people staying in it lost their roof. Now that's the only report that we heard. There's nothing confirmed there, but uh, obviously that would be an absolute travesty. Again, as we uh, pan around tonight, you may see an occasional flash, and that is a uh, transformer, which is uh, blowing uh, off in the distance, and obviously each time one of those blows, somebody loses power. So tremendous uh, power outages here, and we have heard word of uh, tree limbs, power lines down, uh, some structural damage, but as far as uh, the, the amount of that, it would be too early to tell until the sun comes up and these winds die down just a little bit. But again, hurricane force winds that continue right here in Gulfport, Mississippi, and we'll keep you posted from here. Back to you, Rick. Jim Cantori, Gulfport, Mississippi. We'll check back with you, Jim, at uh, half past the hour. Now let's turn over to Dr. Steve Lyons, our hurricane expert. And Steve, and as we go to the satellite picture here, it appeared that uh, George kind of varied in intensity for a while yesterday and early last night, but then made a definite trend towards strengthening as it, as it gets closer to the coast now. Yeah, it did, uh, and now it's uh, right on the ocean, uh, ocean land interface, and it's not going to intensify anymore. Sometimes we've seen them intensify right on landfall, but it looks like this is just about uh, going in and it's not going to intensify anymore. But the eye wall on the east side here in this big, heavy area of thunderstorm activity here is rather intense and that's where we're getting some of the very very strong winds. Jim where you just heard is on the on the western side of the circulation uh, in a little much safer location. And also on the western side of the circulations is New Orleans so they had strong winds but not uh, not the worst of conditions. That is correct and of course the, their uh, pile up of water came in the easterly flow ahead of the circulation so they're starting to become a little bit better although they're not out of the woods yet but the winds are quite a bit lighter over there on the west side only gusting to maybe gusting to hurricane force. Well we have a, a uh, Doppler radar for you right here, Dr. Lyons, and you can plainly see the eye and the most intense part of the eye wall, which is very close to Biloxi and Pascagoula. Uh, also, southern Alabama likely getting hit very hard at this point. Yeah, and the thing that's really uh, saving them quite a bit is there's the, the barrier islands out here are taking the brunt of all the high surf, and so what they're really getting is just the storm surge interior to those. Uh, those islands out there, which is good news for them, although the islands are taking the brunt not only of the surge there, but also of the uh, wave action. Here, of course, is the mainland and here. And you can see right now the very, very heavy band of thunderstorms. That is the northeastern eye wall, and that has typically been the strongest area of the hurricane uh, almost since its inception. And for folks just turn, tuning in, in that northeast section of the eye wall, uh, Biloxi reporting a 126 mile an hour wind gust. Uh, Steve, uh, just to get 
people associated with where we are. This is the Florida Panhandle and Southern Alabama. What, what do you think about Mobile Bay? Has there been a lot of water piling up in there? Uh, there should be some, uh, quite a bit, but it's not quite as bad a surge problem when you get uh, over into this area. It drops off quite a bit. So they may have six feet uh, of water level rise uh, if they're unfortunate and off to the, uh, off to the east last. But uh, when you go uh, basically Pascagoula eastward, uh, westward, excuse me, that's the area where the storm surge really uh, maximizes. And of course, New Orleans is the worst, but they're not going to get that much right now. And here's an example. Here's the Gulfport Biloxi uh, storm surge for a direct hit. You can see here we'd be on the upper edge of the Category 2, and we would expect probably in the order of 8 to 10 feet maximum water level rises. That's not everywhere, but maximum water level rises. Another uh, developing scenario is the extremely heavy rainfall, and since we have watched the movement of the storm slow down so much and could slow even further, uh, heavy freshwater flooding, let's say, uh, could be a, a very, very big problem. Right, and this, uh, this graphic we ginned up as a sort of an, a guide to people, and yesterday it was moving around 8. It slowed down a little bit, and you can see the potential rainfall totals. These are only estimates, keep in mind, uh, that could, people could experience, but 1 to 2 feet we're not talking in inches anymore, we're talking one to two feet in the uh, area of where landfall is occurring and just to the east. And Pensacola, already nine inches or more of rain and unofficial reports of 16 inches of rainfall in the, in the panhandle of Florida. And yeah, there's and much more to come. And that's way out on the periphery. Those are associated with very persistent rain bands. So in the center of the hurricane, it could be much worse than that. And another impact is the uh, severe weather threat. One of the things we've noticed is oftentimes when the eye wall comes ashore, the winds are so strong, people think it's a tornado and will report tornado-like winds and a tornado sighting, when in reality it's just the very strong winds from the, from the eye wall itself. I'm not saying there isn't a tornado there, but it is possible. Normally we have the tornadoes ahead of the, the eye wall. It's not, it's not typical to have them in the eye wall, but it's not impossible either. They're not general. They're not the uh, the devastating F4s and F5s associated with spring thunderstorms, but they can do a lot of damage. They can, and when they're superimposed on a 100 mile an hour sustained wind, you add another 100 to it. Now you've got 200, and that's enough to capsize or completely destroy a structure. Dr. Steve Lyons, we'll check back with you at half past the hour. Meanwhile, just a reminder for you, as we always do, you can check with us at weather.com. That's our web website for the latest on Hurricane George. Now let's go back to the studio, and Mark has uh, some information on severe storms yesterday. Well, thank you very much, Rick. And this edition of your current weather and forecast brought to you by Allegra. Actually, we'll talk temperatures. And yesterday it was a hot, summery day from New England westward into the southern plains states. All these little red dots repre represent cities that had record heat. Washington, D.C., a remarkable 96 degrees. Uh, summer's over, right? It is autumn, but still summery weather to be found. And it was a hot one right up to Boston, where we hit 86 degrees. And westward to Indianapolis, 93. And southward to Birmingham, 94. Looking at temperatures this morning, still quite mild from Washington, D.C. to Dallas. But to the north, we do see change, and much cooler, drier air is coming down through the lakes. Temperatures dropping 10 to 20 degrees from where they were yesterday. And all this cool air is behind a cold front, which is now shoving its way southward across Pennsylvania and the New England region. As we check your forecast out for today, high pressure in the Midwest means a beautiful day. From Chicago to Pittsburgh, while to the south, our tropical system drifts north. Rain spreads up into Jackson and Birmingham. And with our cold front progressing southeastward, we'll cool you down a bit today in New York City, Philadelphia, and Washington, D.C. Boston, we're forecasting a high of 75 today. That's a good 10 degrees cooler. No precipitation. Chicago looks beautiful. Maybe a scattered storm in Kansas City. Dallas, hot and dry. And Atlanta, the threat for a shower later on. Telecommunications provided for the Weather Channel live shots in part by Bell South. Stay with us. We'll check on travel conditions next. This program was sponsored by Allegra. This year, ask your doctor about Allegra and really go for it. Allergy season. Catch some air like never before.